Good evening, everybody. Waiting for the uh, gala to begin. We're just going to give it two minutes to allow people to sign on. Just two minutes. All right. Well, hello. Welcome, everyone. We are at Madison's Bronx Board Virtual Gala, our second annual. Hard to believe it was a year ago when we started this. Online events. Just amazing. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on this CYA Live platform, which we, in fact, were the introducers to it a year ago. And it's just an amazing platform for this type of event. So we thank the CYA Live people. And everyone on the Bronx board is so grateful for you being here tonight. My name is Armand Paganelli, if you don't know that, and I'll serve as your master of ceremonies tonight. So now I'm going to take a little time just to kind of lay out the evening and give you some guidelines. Tonight's event will only last about one hour, maybe a little longer, but not much over an hour. And your involvement will be listening to our pre-recorded uh, videos as well as um, some live videos that we will have tonight. You can be interactive by using the chat feature on the right side of your screen. You won't be able to join the stage and speak though, unfortunately. That may cause a lot of uh, havoc. You control the volume in two ways, on the screen next to the video that you're watching and also on your computer volume. Your other interactive involvement is really the reason that we're gathering here tonight. At any time during the presentation tonight, you, yes, you can make a donation to help us continue the work that we are doing at the Madison Square Boys and Girls Club, it's specifically at the Bronx Clubhouse as well. How do I do that, you ask? I got to do that right now. Well, if you just look at the right side of your screen, it says click here to donate now. That's it. That'll take you directly to Madison's gala site and you'll be able to make your donations and there are various levels predetermined that you can donate at or donate at whatever level you are comfortable with so as you know COVID-19 hit the communities that we serve in the Bronx very hard some of the hardest hit communities in our country we at Madison had to shut down for a while but we're grateful that we reopened for summer camp last year and for remote learning during the fall Madison, uh, and we're very proud of it, has also provided a food pantry for our much deserving families. This was spearheaded by Madison, by uh, CC Sabathia and his wife, Amber, and our Bronx Advisory Board. Uh, if we can, let's take a look at the Bronx Advisory Board screen, Olivia. 
yeah, these are our members working hard year round to uh, continue the work with Madison. I personally want to thank all of you for your support and your guidance and, uh, and just for being the great people that you are and caring so much about our community. All right. And we'd also like to welcome our newest Bronx Advisory Board member, Mr. Derek Hammett. Welcome to the family, Derek. Been working hard, so hard already to do some really innovative stuff. We've been helping our members' families that are experiencing food insecurity and flat out hunger since the start of the pandemic. We've provided bags of healthy food and the packages have also contained a supply of uh, masks and gloves so that these families can engage in safe practices. And these, this PPE was donated by Mount Carmel Pharmacy. Also wanna thank all of you who have supported this event so far, uh, including these sponsors, uh, United Public Adjusters, Mount Carmel Pharmacy, uh, Seamwork Studios, Walmart, Constance Curran, John Emmerich, uh, Derek Hammett, and I think some others have come on at the sponsor level uh, of just in recent minutes. Uh, I'm going to give you a heads up that so far, we are at a level that is blowing our mind. We have already raised $36,000 for this event. Woo! I hope you're cheering with me, $36,000 already. We have a lofty goal. That's almost halfway to where we wanna get before the night is over. But I know that with your help and maybe spreading the word beyond those who are with us on the on the uh, event tonight, we can, uh, we can reach that goal tonight, but let's do it together. And we hope that with tonight's donations, we're able to provide kids with a safe, positive space to come together this summer. We've developed club fun at the club to help combat summer learning loss. For many of these kids, they may not have somewhere to go or food to eat while their parents are at work during the summer. So you understand the work that we have to do is a heavy lift tonight, but many hands make light work. We are those many hands. So reach deep down and help at the level that you can. And at this time, we're gonna take a moment to recognize somebody very special. Mr. Charles Ralph Porter Jr. of uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Ralph passed away this past uh, February. Ralph was the director of the Smilo Clubhouse in the Bronx from 1972 to 92. He was a valued community leader and successfully mentored hundreds of children from the Morris Senior community in the Bronx. Ralph was affectionately called Mr. P, denoting the widespread respect that he commanded. Through his important work at the Smilo Boys and Girls Club, Ralph was able to provide a safe and caring environment for children and teens in our Bronx communities. So an annual college scholarship has been set up in Ralph's honor at the uh, Smilo Clubhouse with generous funding by MBD Community Housing Corporation and Mr. Derek Lovett on our Bronx board. More information on Charles Ralph Porter Jr. scholarship can be had by contacting the Smilo Clubhouse in the Bronx. And now, Let's get moving. Let's get an intro to Madison with our Madison Dreams video. feels like my second home. We get to talk about our feelings and things that are going on in our life. Most of the time when I get here, I'm like, oh, like it's a relief to get out of school and stuff. I love Boys and Girls Club. I've been here since I was second grade. I was like, this is amazing. I don't know how else to put it. It's just a great place to be. The club taught me a bunch of things, different, like different things like to help us in life. Discipline, being kind to others. The club showed me I can have high expectations for myself. We learn about drugs, and how to use them, well, not to, use, not to use them. They taught me how to make friends because at school I didn't have many friends. We learned how to respect one another. I learned how to do math better. I learned how to be a better leader and that school is so important in life that it can take you, it can take you anywhere. I've learned how to become from a little girl to a, a young woman. How to be bold and bright and never be scared. I learn how to dance, I learn how to do art. It teaches you how to be professional. They taught me to dream big. 
to never give up on your dreams and just always be, ha always have faith and be hopeful. When I grow up, I want to be a teacher. Someday I want to be an entertainer. Stay tuned for me. I want to be a visual artist and musical artist. I don't know, I don't know what I want to be yet, but I really like technology. I like to fix things. When I grow up, I want to be a lawyer because I love to debate. When I grow up, I want to be a professional dancer because it's my passion. When I grow up, I want to be an artist. I want to be an actress. I want to be a psychiatrist. I want to be a basketball player when I grow up. And someday I'll be giving back to my community, especially here. I feel like they have done so much to me, and I just want to give that back to them. At the club, I'm always learning new things. But the most important thing I learned is that I can dare to dream. I gotta remember the mute button. The tears are real. Uh, I've watched the video many times over and it still gets me. How do we not wanna support these dreams? How are you not moved by kids that can express these dreams? And if we can be part of enabling that, let's do it. Let's do it, friends. All right, this is a great organization. Every organization needs great leadership. We're blessed with that with Madison. So at this time, let's hear from our executive director, Mr. Tim McChristian. Tim. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining Madison Square Boys and Girls Club for this virtual version of our annual Bronx Gala put on by our Bronx Advisory Board. I'm Tim McChristian, the executive director of Madison Square Boys and Girls Club, and I want to thank you all for your support over the years and for joining us tonight. This last year has been challenging for all of us but especially for the communities that Madison serves in Harlem, Brooklyn, and the Bronx. Our mission has never been more critical in the under-resourced neighborhoods where our clubhouses are located, including our Grimm and Smilo clubhouses in the Bronx. We closed all of our clubhouses last March when the pandemic first started and worked to identify the needs of our members and community as the impact began to be understood. Our new services included daily virtual after-school programs to keep our members engaged, on track academically, and feeling supported. We also began weekly parental check-ins with the families of our members. In the Bronx, we began working with the Pitch In Foundation, led by our great friends Amber and Cece Sabathia, to support weekly food pantry programs at our clubhouses, and included distributing masks and gloves donated by our great friends at Mount Carmel Pharmacy. In speaking with parents, we asked what else could Madison do to support their needs, and their feedback was clear. Please open again as soon as possible. Through the support of our Madison board, we invested in thousands of masks and gloves, upgraded all of our HVAC systems, and hired additional facility staff to provide increased cleaning of our clubhouses. These actions gave us the confidence to reopen all of our clubhouses last July for a reduced capacity summer program which we offered free to our members while implementing all of the required child and staff safety protocols. Additionally, in the fall, we began serving as remote learning centers to support the New York City Public School hybrid learning schedules where kindergarten to eighth graders attend remote classes from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at our clubhouses. For the teens, we have offered our Teen Campus, which is an activity-based program both in person at the clubhouses and virtual. It includes our project graduate program to assist in academics, workforce development, and a program we call Listening Circles, which is an opportunity for our teens to discuss what's on their minds. As the COVID vaccination rollout continues, we will coordinate our programs to reflect the latest health and safety guidelines acquired. Our 5,000 members need the services and programs that Madison offer, and our goal is to ensure that each and every one of our members has the support and resources required to navigate through these challenging times. The support of our Bronx Advisory Board is critical in allowing us to deliver these services. This evening, we're proud to hear from our 2021 Madison Youth of the Year, Jeremiah, from the John Grimm Clubhouse located in the Forum area. 
This extraordinary young man has distinguished himself by rising above challenging circumstances to become a shining example of confidence, perseverance, and to a bright future he continues to build for himself. In addition to Jeremiah, we're also very excited to hear from our good friends, Amber and Cece Sabathia, who have been integral to our Bronx Clubhouse programs and communities over the years. They have personally worked to ensure we provide the critical resources to address the food insecurity in the Bronx, as well as delivering needed technology tools to our members to support their academic progress. We hope tonight's event serves to motivate you to continue to support our mission at Madison to save and enhance the lives of youth in the Bronx and across New York City. For 137 years, Madison has worked to give our youth a home away from home that allows them to flourish and grow. Tonight's program will raise needed funds for our Club Fund, which is our seven week summer program that includes a variety of educational and recreational activities. We realize our youth have suffered academically this past year, so we're focused on helping to close any potential learning loss through academic enrichment programs that we will offer this summer. We have also made the decision to offer our summer program to our youth at no charge to them or their families to assist in their recoveries. I'm so grateful and appreciative of the longstanding support of our Bronx Board of Advisors for the youth in the Bronx. I hope that during tonight's program, you will please give what you can. A little goes a long way and a lot goes even further. Thanks in advance for your support doing what I know will be a fun evening tonight. Stay safe and be well. Thank you, Tim. Thanks so much. Truly a great leader, great words, well said. So uh, in my roughly 20 years of serving on the Bronx board, uh, there's been many things that move me, but I'm always most inspired by the stories that come directly out of the clubhouse and even more specifically from our Youth of the Year. It's time to hear from one of this year's Youth of the Year, Jeremiah. Good evening. My name is Jeremiah Cherry. I am 70 years old and I attend Dual Clinton High School. I've been a Madison Square Boys and Girls Club member since I was 10 years old. Tonight, I'm going to talk about my story and how the club has positively impacted and created a foundation for me to succeed in my future. I grew up in out of housing development. I witnessed and seen a lot of things a kid my age shouldn't have to experience. There was a lot of crime, poverty, and drugs in Adams. Not the best environment for a six-year-old. My father tried his best to get us out of the neighborhood. He worked a lot to support my brothers and sisters. At the time, I lived with six siblings and my stepmom. I was too young to fully understand what was going on at the time, but I knew at an early age, I wasn't treated like my other siblings. I felt like an outcast, and I was treated poorly compared to everyone else. I never told my father about what was going on at home because of his busy work schedule. My grandparents were the only ones to tell me the truth about my family. I found out from my grandparents that my mother had passed away when I was one. I always thought my stepmom was my biological mother. I wasn't comfortable in my own house. The only people I trusted were my grandparents. I started to hang out with them a lot more often. My grandma taught me how to be a positive role model. My grandparents treated me like their own. I felt safe and loved. But at the age of seven, my grandma passed away. She was one of the only few people I trusted. After school, I didn't want to go home. One of my siblings told me about the Boys and Girls Club that allows you to play basketball. I joined Smile Clubhouse. I love being at the clubhouse. Very different environment from Adams Housing Development. I got to play basketball every day after school. I played in the social recreation room. We played video games, billiards, board games, and I was on the basketball team. I felt safe, welcomed, and supported by the staff and the members at the club. Once again, I had to transition and adjust to my new surroundings. My family, we moved to Mount Vernon. I had to stop going to Smilo because it was too far and I was still attending high school in the Bronx. But John E. Grimm, the third clubhouse, was close to my high school. I didn't know anyone, it was a new environment, but at this stage of my life, I blossomed. I became more than just a basketball player. John E. Grimm exposed me to unlimited resources. The club gave me structure and strong foundation on how to be successful. I was treated with respect from all members and staff. I was given an opportunity and I joined almost every program. Project Graduate, we went on college tours, Keystone. I learned how to be a strong leader in my community. 
project towards no drugs, I even got a summer job at the club. We learned about financial literacy and I started my own clothing business called Celestial Clothing. The club taught me values to live with integrity and strong character. I am really a clubhouse kid. Yes, you are, Jeremiah, and a true example of uh, the successes we love seeing coming out of the clubhouse. And from uh, Jeremiah, this year's Youth of the Year, we now want to uh, introduce a video that talks about the 2018 Youth of the Year, Madison alumni, Grace. As the Bill Benton go, I became part of the Madison family. As a member, I have had the wonderful opportunity to be a part of Smart Girls and the Empowerment Program, which has made me a stronger young lady, physically and mentally. I believe that each one of us is unique, and you have to embrace that uniqueness with confidence. The club has not only assisted me with becoming a leader, but it has prepared me for life. The staff has inspired me to become the physician I aspire to be. The clubhouse has also helped me find my voice so that I can inspire others. Because of the club, I believe that greatness is inside everyone, including me. I can climb every mountain that comes my way. Yes, you can and yes, you will. Grace, come on on. Welcome. Grace is going to join us live here. Hello. Can you see me? There you go. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Good All evening, right. Everyone. Great. Good evening, Grace. Welcome. Thanks again Thank for you. being here tonight, and thanks for sharing that video. It's, uh, again, another super inspiring piece from one of our Madison superstars. Uh, you joined us last year at this event, and you caught us up on your time since you graduated high school. So it's been a, a crazy year, right, in so many ways for all of us. Uh, how has it been for you? Let's just be simple. What's changed since we spoke to you last? Um, so the past year has been very busy. Um, I've had a lot of science classes and a lot of like school workload, but it's been great. I'm also going into my senior year of college and I'm about to start my application to medical school. Um, I'm also a, a member of the uh, Lupus Research Alliance. Um, leadership board, and I'm also writing my first book, which should be done by August. Yeah. That's it? Yes, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, I, I hope that all of our supporters and friends listening are as impressed uh, as I am. You started writing your first book. My goodness. Uh, what, what, what drives anybody to be so motivated? Um, so has the pandemic, the, the events of the last year in any way dampened your, your quest to become a physician at all or any way dampened your inspiration to do that? Or do you feel more inspired? Um, I feel like it has inspired me even more because I've witnessed how like the world can like unite to get through a global pandemic. And I've also witnessed that, you know, um, doctors and medical professionals had a great like deal in making that happen. And that in itself is inspirational. Yeah, I've, I've seen so much of that inspirational work. Can you tell our friends uh, here at Madison a little more about your nine year journey at Madison kind of encapsulated for us? Yeah, um, so I came to the clubhouse when I was around nine years old. The club really helped me um, get through a lot of hard times and I will forever be grateful. Um, they helped me um, like develop leadership skills and more, which has really helped me up to this point. 
Awesome. And in this time, have you been able to get back to Madison and in, engage there at all? I mean, separate of the pandemic restrictions, but have you been able to engage with uh, the clubhouse? Um, I have not been able to because of, you know, the COVID restrictions, but I'm still in contact with um, some of the staff members and some of the, uh, some of my uh, YOY peers from 2018. Great. All right. So lastly, we wrap it up. Please let our supporters know where you see yourself in the future. Like what type of work do you aspire to do and where do you eventually see yourself uh, ending up? And and in the future, do you see yourself being more directly involved with the Madison family? Um, in the future, I envision myself um, applying to medical school, of course, and hopefully getting accepted into my one of my like two top um, medical schools, which is either Albert Einstein in the Bronx or SUNY Downstate in Brooklyn. And yeah, I do see myself um, still being involved in Madison. Uh, Madison will forever be a second home for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. And I'm looking quickly on the chat to the side here. You've already got the first uh, pre-order on your book. So uh, you oh. might want to <laughs> send out a sign-up list to, uh, right after the event, and you may be uh, getting advances on that book before you even have to put it out there yourself. <laughs> yes, I'll let everyone know when it's done. <laughs> All right. Thank well, you for uh, having me. Grace, thank you so much for being part of this and helping to inspire uh, us and, uh, and hopefully mm -hmm. our donors to even uh, continue to dig deeper, to continue to work and get more examples of you. <laughs> because you are a great example for all of us. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Grace. And now uh, here's a great video that provides a, uh, a, a fantastic overview of Madison's COVID response. I have been blessed to be here 30 years uh, as office manager and a community person. That's why I live in a neighborhood. I've seen changes through the years in the neighborhood and community, but this was really a shock. I was scared and nervous. Scared for what might happen. Nervous of what might not happen. I felt like angry that a disease had to stop me from seeing my friends. It's a very condensed community. Whatever affects you affects everyone. This is my community and I want to be here. When COVID first started and I was stuck at home, I was going insane. This is where I like to spend my time. When people say what their passion is, this is this is my thing. The COVID response to the uh, coronavirus has been really to address the needs of the community. We've been able to do that uh, really by expanding our services to now offer food pantries. Some of the family members are not able to work right now. They can't work. That grocery helps them out a lot. We just come to the club and they help everybody, really everybody. I would feel pretty sad if I couldn't come to the club because it makes me feel happy and safe. I thought they were going to be closed down for like very long time and I wouldn't be able to go there. Without the club, I will be like in a, in a world of boredom. When they said the club shut down, I was like, I hope they have a virtual boys and girls club, and they did. We had to take what we do in a physical space and then put that all online. And we have that first Zoom session, and then kids start popping up, and you start seeing their names come up on the screen, and then you start to see their faces, and you see the excitement of their faces and seeing your face, and then you get excited. What a great cycle of happiness. They would ask us how our day was, and then we would do some games, do some learning activities. It would be so fun. We were here for the summer. That was a, a, a help. Uh, a blessing, I have to say, because a lot of parents didn't know what was going to happen after the spring. New club format, a lot of social distancing. We've had to uh, limit the amount of kids that we have in the club, but the ability to impact the ones who are a part of the program, uh, to offer them a, a summer program uh, that, again, with all the parameters, has been really fun and creative. We still get to play games. We still get to share things that we never knew before about each other. It is really about relationships. You know, uh, the club is so beyond just an after-school program. It's really, again, that extended family. 
uh, the second home for a lot of young people. I felt when the club opened up, I was very happy. I can actually go somewhere other than staying home. When I have a bad day, it makes me have a good day. It's like you have so much fun and do so much things that it all melts away. It makes me feel safe. So for them to come here and to see that their faces lighting up, their eyes lighting up underneath the mask, and just that how they're excited about coming in and not being home all day, it's, it's amazing, it's exciting. Even if things might be different or something during these years, parts of it still feels the same. The staff still care about you. There's still a lot of different fun activities that you could do, and there's still new things every day. But the club is also a way of people communicating during this world of time, or kids connecting, but we all stay healthy and strong. I think that the club, no matter what, makes me feel at home. But I get to see my friends, and I get to do normal activities that I will do if the pandemic wasn't going on. There are after-school programs, and then there are beacons of light. It's really just not about after school. That's the function that we do, but we do so much more. I am extremely proud of the staff through this all. They are the secret sauce to what makes this all happen. What's gonna always be the same is our mission, to save and enhance the lives of the boys and girls that walk through these doors. That would definitely remain the same. I've seen children rotate in and rotate out. So there's a legacy, and I'm excited to see what comes from this. I think it, I, I believe, I'm not even thinking. I know good is coming from this. There is good coming, and part of that goodness has got to come from you, you all on with us tonight. Uh, if it's time now, click that big blue box that says click here to donate now. Dig down deep. Don't be shy. I mean, if 10,000, 20,000, 5,000 is in your wheelhouse, go for it. We'd love to see those numbers. We need to see the numbers go up. We have a lofty goal tonight to get club fun working for the summer and taking care of all of these kids for the summer in an amazing program that's been so carefully designed to take care of the kids who have been sheltered in their homes doing remote learning for over a year. So please, if you're moved, click that donate now button. All right, now uh, I believe in angels. I feel that my parents are my angels and they guide me through many things in my life. Madison has a family of angels in a way of some very special people. Former New York Yankee pitcher CeCe Sabathia and his wife Amber are those angels for Madison. CeCe and Amber have been so integral to our food pantry and in getting technology into the hands of our kids. They've been so kind to sit down with me for an interview. We spoke a couple of nights ago. Please enjoy this important conversation. Welcome, uh, Cece and Amber. It's, uh, it's hard to imagine it was over a year ago that we had our first ever virtual gala, where just the time just flew by, you know. And uh, a year ago, most of us were pretty new to these video meetings and virtual events, and now everybody is so super well schooled in that stuff and uh i just want to let you know that you had such a profound impact on uh not only our board but all of our contributors last year and uh we're just so honored that you've agreed to come back and and join us again this year i know you got busy lives and uh uh just letting the audience out there know that we're recording this tonight because we had a scheduling conflict uh, the night of the event but again so grateful for you guys making the time and, and being with us. So uh, so let's just start with, how have you been? How have the Sabathi has been? My recollection tells me that we got to the fact that you have four kids, because I have four kids, two boys, okay. two girls. Mine are significantly older, like 23 to 31, but you got a small crew. How have things been for you guys? They've been good, they've been good. We've been very, very busy. Um, even in COVID, we, found ways to be productive and and to do different projects so we've had a few projects that have came out in the past year 
um, with Cece's documentary. Cece has a book coming out. Yeah. And I started a new endeavor, a new career. Um, the kids have kept us very busy. Um, and it's been great. And these, these virtual events have been fun. I've realized that I actually enjoy them a little bit more you know you can attend an event it gives you something to do it's exciting and then you can go upstairs and go to your room right wear your slippers right and it was looking <laughs> <laughs> and uh the 24 7 home with everybody you know you got to find a space and you know there's always something going on in the background right there's you hear the dishes clanking or the dog barking or the Mm -hmm. kids going right but yeah. you know we've all learned to even in work you know you've learned to be tolerant of that and let's let's make things work and uh, i've really been amazed at how how people have dealt with it so uh so let's get let's get to why we're here right uh we're we're raising money tonight for madison and uh i just i want to ask you and our supporters want to know what drives you to continue to be involved and want to be so committed to uh to Madison, let us let us know that. I think for us, I mean, it's just a no brainer. You know, um, our lives are so so affected and and in a great way by the Boys and Girls Club. Mine um, at an early age, and and you know, being able to come here and find in Madison, and you know, kind of find letting that be our second home, and you know, kind of growing with the kids. You know, our foundation has kind of grown up with the kids. Um, our events have evolved as the kids have gotten older, and. You know, from the the first you know Christmas caravan we did, we we, we were at Payless yeah, shoe store. It was like twenty kids. Yeah, and you know now we we get fifty two kids and we bring them out here um, to Jersey. You know we do a big party, so it's and they get a bunch of Jordan stuff. So it's just a, it's a uh, it's cool to be able to you know still have an impact on, on on Madison and the kids' lives, and just because the Boys and Girls Club has such a huge huge impact on on my life and my career. Yeah, that's amazing. So it's paying back, it's giving back, making making notice of of what what gave you your foundation, part of what gave you your foundation. And that's for us who serve on the board, that's our goal, right? Give these kids something firm to stand on. Uh, because the communities they're living in, there's there's so many bad elements that you gotta find a way to help them uh, navigate around that stuff. And Madison certainly has been that. So Last year, the focus was, and you were, uh, both of you, such an integral part of uh, our food pantry initiative. Uh, and you facilitated not only your monetary donations, but you both were personally out there donating your time to distribute uh, food, you know, yourselves and with your family. So, in fact, just so, uh, again, our people know that that started last April. So it, it it's still going and it's uh, been over a year and you need to know that you guys have been instrumental in helping Madison distribute over 500,000 pounds of food in that year to our Madison members. That's a half a million pounds of food and I think it was way more than that but uh, but those are the numbers they're putting it at it now and it, it's just awesome an awesome achievement so uh something brought you to this what, so what it is what is it about i guess the term is food insecurity right and and the pandemic opened our eyes to how many people were in these situations and it, and it blew up because people lost jobs they couldn't find food buy food be fed what what made that mission important to you guys I think for me, just knowing the situation that kids that go to the club are in, you know, I, I remember, you know, after school being able to get that hot meal and then dinner, you know, before I went home to maybe sometimes not having dinner yeah. at home. So once I knew that the Boys and Girls Club was closing down, I was like, there's so many meals that kids are going to miss in that afternoon, you know, time that, that they're usually at the club. So, you know, me and Amber, you know, I, I literally sat down, I was like, we have to do something about you know, feeding these kids and, and she immediately hit Fresh Direct and we we're able to partner up with them and, you know, they immediately start dropping off food like right away. I mean, yeah, I think it was like the first week, the first week school closed down and then that, that next Wednesday we were out in the Bronx, um, you know, distributing food. And it's just because we understand what the kids and the club go through and because we live that life and we and we understand it. So, you know, that was the first, like that was one of the first things we, we thought about right when the pandemic hit was, what are the kids going to eat? You know, the kids that get that meal at the club. So, um, yeah, I mean, that was that was one of those things where, 
you know, so I come up with these ideas and then Amber puts them in the, executes them, you know? So, um, you know, we, we, we make a pretty good team that way. Yeah, well, that's it. You play the team sport and you're living it in your in your real life, right? It's a hell of a battery you got going on there right now, <laughs> right? Who's pitching, who's catching, just make it work, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, in, inspiring. So food was a big issue. But now we have all these kids who are in a situation where they need technology to be able to do their schoolwork, right? And, uh, and who's going to come to the rescue again? Here's the Sabathia family. <laughs> and with with your foresight and your efforts based on where you came from and what you've achieved and the understanding that we have an obligation to give back if we can right and and make things better so through the uh the players alliance which i'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit about in a minute you spearheaded uh a, an amazing donation to the grim clubhouse of uh 10 uh top shelf Microsoft computers and all of the accessories to make it work. So clearly you have an understanding of how important access to technology is for these kids, especially during the COVID era, the remote era, era that we live in today. So how, how did you come about realizing the importance of that and, and bringing that to Madison? Um, so just through the Players Alliance and Microsoft, um, you know, the Players Alliance was formed um, in the wake of the murder of George Floyd, it, you know, 150 um, current and former baseball players came together to form this organization. Um, and we're just trying to make change in, in communities, um, you know, baseball related and non-baseball related, you know, uh, trying to just trying to make effect in, in the community. And, you know, we um, had a chance to do the power up labs um, where kids. So we did this virtual uh, tour through the Negro League Museum in Kansas City. And kids were able to sign up and get a get a tablet to be able to go on this tour. And, you know, through that, we were able to do the power-up labs at Grimm's. And we did one at, at the Harlem uh, RBI, too, yeah. um, in Dream Harlem, School. at the Dream School in, in, in Harlem. Um, but it's just cool to be able to, to give back to these kids. Like I said, you know, growing up in the situation that I did and understanding, you know, what the kids in the club need and, and, and you know, what they don't have access to. Um, that's what we're here for, you know, that, that's what we started pitching to do and, and uh, to be able to, to, you know, get these kids the access to, to things that they need to, to succeed in life is literally what I, what I play baseball for and, and the reason why, um, you know, we do what we do. So, um, yeah, it was, just, it was just another awesome thing that we were able to, you know, partner up with Microsoft and the Players Alliance and, and the kids at Madison were able to, to benefit from it. Yeah, that's great. You know, you gave us so many thrills on the mound in your career playing in Yankee Stadium. And I don't know that those thrills are surpass the thrills and the excitement that I get in watching you as a couple do what you do for these kids. That I'm getting goosebumps right now. Okay. Just just thinking about the magnitude of, of that. Um, and a lot of it is leading by example. Uh, the Players Alliance, are those, uh, is that, are those uh, black uh, baseball players? Yeah, it's, it's black baseball players. And then we have the allies too. So, um, you know, we have, you know, the, you know, Kirk, Clayton Kershaw's, um, you know, Chad Green's, a bunch of different guys that come out and support our, support everything that we do. Um, but yeah, it's an organization formed by, um, by black players. Yeah, when you can pool the resources of people who have influence like professional athletes, um, especially especially on minority communities, you know, the those kids look up to these star athletes and and again in not only being on a on a field or a court to show how you can work together as a team, but in society work together as a team to do things. The, the, I almost let the F-bomb slip just then. <laughs> the, the effing message you guys are sending is huge, right? And uh, that's great. What did you call the uh, the auxiliary part of it? The, there's the Players Alliance and the... The Allies. The, the Allies. 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 Yeah, okay. yeah. And, I, and I think for me, like being, you know, present at the club too, you know, showing my face at the club, um, it's something that's super important to me too. Like, 
you know, we go, you know, we we can easily just, you know, throw money at stuff and, and, you know, different things like that. But to be actually present in the buildings and showing up for the kids is something that's huge for me because I got a chance to meet Dave Stewart when I was 10, nine years old. And it changed my life. It set me on this course that I'm on now. So if I can change, if I can, if I can step into a Boys and Girls Club and it changes one kid and he's, you know, now going to do the, some of the things that we're doing in our life, and the future for the kids, I mean, that's all. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I was with you in the clubhouse uh, a couple of years ago um, when you donated the room and the, the new room Team and uh, Team you know, Center. Yeah. Team Center. And, uh, and just seeing those kids, you know, having you there, you know it. It definitely gets at least one and probably many more. <laughs> but also adults, you know, you inspire people to want to do good stuff. So, uh, so back to why we're here in anticipation of summer things opening up kids being allowed to gather now in groups uh i want you to know and our audience to know that the funds being raised in tonight's gala are going to be exclusively used for what we call club fun which is uh the summer program and this new program has been so carefully uh, comprised of uh, educational and recreational activities that are designed to fight the effects of COVID-19 learning losses to help bridge the gaps uh, both socially and uh, educationally and just really try and force the effort to keep our 5,000 members and the community just going strong. So with that in mind then I'm just going to lay this on you. Is there anything that you can say to our supporters here tonight who have come to us with open pockets, right? That, that's why they're here, right? They want to help out. What, what can you say to them to inspire them to, uh, to continue to support the work of Madison and understand uh, how, big, how big the work is and how important it is that we keep doing it? Well, I would say it takes a village. It takes a village to raise a child. And as I sit here, sat here and listened, and you've listed all the things that Cece and I have done, that's not nearly enough. It's not close to enough to be impactful and to really do the work and to do the service. And as you stated, we did the food pantry at the beginning, but we couldn't have finished that after four weeks would just pitch in without your foundation, without the support of other organizations and everybody truly pitching in to be a part of that food pantry. We were able to be impactful and feed multiple families week after week and food security to those families. And it wasn't just us. As you sat here and, and you listed what we did, the whole time I kept saying, but it wasn't just us. Yeah. We didn't do it alone. We did it with those that are here tonight. We did it with your foundation, your board members. We did it with the supporters of, of the club. And collectively, together, we were impactful and we made a difference. And we brought dinner to the tables of so many families that needed it. So if I could just keep saying more and more, I encourage everybody to support, everybody to be a part of the Boys and Girls Club because we know the work that they do. We know the work that your foundation does. You know the work that we do. We know we're truly collectively together making a difference. And our village is going to be impactful in the Bronx. And we can't do it alone. Cece and I can't do it alone. Um, Cece on the mound and being the superstar pitcher he is, he can't do it alone. Everyone needs to jump in. Everyone needs to support. Everybody needs to give. And we together as one can collectively support and make a difference in a child's life tonight. So I encourage everyone, think about that money you spend on things that just aren't as important. There's things that we have money that we could just give, um, whether it be a trip, a bag, uh, your hair, your shoes. I mean, there's things that just aren't as important. Amen to that. Yeah, yeah as, as, as food security, as education, um, you know, helping this children, these children be successful in life or giving them a boost. And these kids truly need that boost because they don't have it at home. So I just encourage everybody here tonight to give to the best of your ability. And it doesn't matter if it's $5, if it's $500, if it's $5,000, and if it's a blessing, if you have it, 50 and plus, give it because know that the work that they do at the club is truly impactful. And that's just that's just what I want to say. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was a mouthful of uh, a, a gem 
sparkling brighter than the brightest diamond. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, really amazing. Cece, you want to top it off at all? No, I mean, just, you know, just the, the work that the club is doing, um, you know, is really impactful. I mean, you just look at the alumni, you know, and, and, and look at the people that have come through the club and, you know, not just the Madison, just, you know, boys and girls clubs in general. So, yeah, I mean, anybody out there that if you, if, if you have it, you're watching this, please donate because, you know, it, it, the, the, the work that the club does really, really impacts the communities and, you know, some great kids are coming out of there. Beautiful, beautifully said. Guys, uh, Cece, Amber, uh, I, we at Madison, we want you to know that uh, what you're doing and how you're doing it is not going unnoticed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. The, the use of your, your influence and your earned treasures, that's wonderful. But what makes this duo, this dynamic duo is so special is that you do it together you do it with humility you do it with family and through this you're clearly making our little world a better place and that's where we start to make the big world better by teaching all of us by example okay. to do the to do the same so we at Madison, we are forever grateful. The kids who are served by Madison are grateful. Thank you so much for, for taking the time out of your busy but fruitful and important lives. And uh, I wish you, we wish you all the best. Stay well. God bless. God bless your family. And and just thank you so much again for your time and all thank of your you. efforts. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who's here tonight. You guys have a great night as well. Yeah, yeah we appreciate it so much. Thanks, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'm, uh, CC. Well, I got to tell you, that was uh, a very fun interview to do because they are truly, truly nice people. And uh, my takeaway is that we have two beautiful people with big hearts doing extraordinary work. And I hope that all of you who are with us tonight are inspired to join in on that work, click on the donate button, and uh, keep rising those numbers. Right now we're at $40,000 raised tonight, 40,000. We wanna get to double that. So if you're, uh, if you're able to, please go deep. And if you can spread the word through social media, send them the links and they can donate for tonight or, and beyond. So now I'd like to introduce uh, and welcome a fellow board member, Ms. Janae Henderson. Here we go. Hey, Janae. Hi, good evening. Oh, so nice to see you. I've, we're only meeting in Zooms and emails <laughs> these days. I haven't seen you in so long. Yeah, oh, it's great to see you as well. It's so wonderful to be here. Ah, oh, so be wonderful to next year. So wonderful to have you here. And uh, Janae, just so everybody knows, is way more than just a Bronx board member. You are also an alumni yes. of Madison. Yes. So uh, that's why we're giving you the spotlight tonight. We want to hear more about that. What was what was attending the club like for you, Janae? Oh, wow. Um, attending the club was so much fun. Um, I began attending the club when I was in second grade. My mom needed a place for me to go after school, and um, she found the club through my school. And um, I mean, the relationships that I built at the club were amazing. Um, I had the best times. My mom would come pick me up and I would cry because I didn't want to leave. Um, and sometimes she'd like go get something to eat and come back just to let me stay a little longer. Um, I learned so many things. I built so many amazing relationships. And for her, it was great because she knew I was safe and taken care of. Um, and that was the priority for her while she was working and going to school. Awesome. So an example of someone who comes from fairly stable home, right? But 
mom's trying to better her life, doesn't want her daughter to fall by the wayside and wants to find a place to give her that, that safety net, which Madison was. So can you explain to our people tonight what your current job is and maybe how Madison played a role in getting you where you are today? Sure. Um, so currently I work for RBC Capital Markets, which is an investment bank. Um, it's actually Royal Bank of Canada, but it's a global bank. bank. So I'm here. I'm based here in New York um, and I head up our conference and event marketing team, um, the U.S. team. So I have a small team and we plan, organize and manage um, conferences, events, client entertainment. Um, we have a golf sponsorship. There's a whole um, wide range of things that we do for the firm. All right. Well, uh, just from me following you in the years that we've been together on the board, you have always been such an impactful spirit and always taken your workplace to us, which has been amazing. So, Janae, if you could speak to the kids at Madison who are focused like these project graduate kids, they're in, they're in, you know, juniors in high school and get ready to go forward. What would be the advice that you would give these club members who currently have the dream of being successful, as successful as Janae Henderson? Um, I would say, first of all, congratulations on what you've done thus far. Um, I think having the um, motivation to join these programs and to not to stay with these programs and to excel and do well is amazing. So congrats already on those achievements. Um, I think also just you know stay motivated. Don't let um, outside noise distract you. Um, lean on people who want to support you. Um, Surround yourself who people who, with like people who are motivated like you, who want to support you. Um, look out for look for mentors. Um, you know, try to identify people that maybe want to encourage you and can give you tools and resources. Um, you know, the young people now are so lucky because they have the internet and it's a wonderful resource. It's a wonderful tool. So, you know, use the resources that are available to you. Um, if you're curious about something, look it up, Google it. Um, you know, do, do your homework on careers and, you know, nothing is, is outside of your reach. Um, but, you know, it takes hard work. And I just think, you know, continue to stay motivated. Um, don't let distractions get you. We'll also have fun. Um, I do think there are a lot of young people out who are extremely focused on their studies, which is amazing, but they sometimes forget to enjoy um, the things that are around them. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your surroundings. So create a balance. That's uh that's so well said, Janae. And all that's going through my mind right now, we spoke earlier with Grace about her writing a book, and I'm imagining that that in book form or Janae Henderson on the lecture tour for kids of those, days, of those ages, you can really make an uh, amazing impact because you did it. You, you did it, you lived it, and, and you're a prime example of putting that work to work to become a success. And you do it in such a nice way. So Thank that's you. awesome. You play such a big role behind the scenes for us in the Bronx board at Madison by getting support from your company, from RB, uh, RBC. What does it mean to you ultimately to be able to give back to Madison? <sighs> um, it's invaluable. Um, when I think of what Madison gave to me, um, just in terms of making having a place for me to go after school. Um, but then aside all the things that I learned, doing my very first resume, um, having my very first job. I went to Camp Madison, which no longer exists, but going to Camp Madison every summer and getting out of the city and being exposed to um, sleeping in the woods and building fires and roasting marshmallows. I mean, I've just had some of the most invaluable experiences at Madison. So me having the ability to impact um, through my company has just been just a really, really great and 
experience for me. Well, that's, uh, that's awesome. And, uh, we on the board and the Madison family are, uh, just blessed and grateful to have you in our chain of supporters. And we hope that that goes on forever and ever. And you, uh, maybe think about that lecture circuit or maybe, <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the book and, uh, and we wish you the greatest, uh, successes and happiness uh, with all of that and all of your work, Janae. Thanks so much for all you do. And we appreciate your time tonight as well. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great evening, everyone. Thanks, Janae. All right, Janae Henderson, everybody, who is just another bright star on our, uh, on our Bronx board and hopefully an inspiration for you to want to give. She's truly another success story from uh, even further back as a Madison alumni, really doing great stuff. That uh, donate button is up there, and uh, now's the time to uh, discuss maybe some different levels of donation that you may want to give. Um, if we can uh, look at the screen right now, these are these are only guides, but I suggest um, if you can, you just start at that five thousand dollar one and just. Just click donate and click on the $5,000 sponsor and just make all of our spirits explode through the screen tonight. You can do that, right? You can do it. I mean, it's, it's 5000 It's a lot of money, but it will have such a tremendously good effect on the work that we're trying to do. Now, I understand maybe you can't do 5000 but look at the other levels. There's a $2,500 sponsorship. We promote strong character. We fund service projects. We fund our camp activities with this money. We're going to have a summer program for kids who have been locked up in their small apartments in the Bronx for over a year. They're going to get to come to the facility, have a wide open gym, be able to enjoy the outside sports and fields. We want them to have this. We need them to have this. This will provide recovery from this past year of challenge spatial learning. Hit these sponsorship numbers, whatever you can do. I say somewhat facetiously about the 5,000 sponsor or even higher, but if you can do it, you're a hero. You're an angel. Do it from your heart if you can and whatever level whatever level you can. Our numbers are going up every minute from all of you donating. But then I also ask you to go further beyond today, bring it outside beyond this screen, beyond this event, and send the link that you got to today. Send this link out to some of your friends who may have an interest because maybe we won't get a lot of the five and 10,000 ones, but we'll do with a lot of hundreds and a lot of 50s because they all add up. It all is part of that. It takes a village. Let's all be part of that village. Let's all make this work together. I appreciate you all so much for taking this time tonight. It's now an hour since we started. One hour. We are going to affect in this one hour the summer of 5,000 children who will benefit from our work tonight. Keep that in mind. Go to bed tonight with the knowledge that you have done so much for somebody you don't even know, but you know deserves a shot. And that's it. I don't know how to express it any more passionately, any more comprehensively. Please give. Please find a way to give. Please find friends who want to give and be part of this. We need this help to keep the Madison programs going. So far, we have an estimated total of roughly $44,000 tonight. Our goal is higher. We want to get much higher than that. So please, please continue to give. You can give after the event is over and even into the next weeks to come. Just save the links you can continue to access us all the way. 
I want to thank again the sponsors that I mentioned earlier, all of our big donors. Thank you so much. I want to thank Cece and Amber and Janae and Grace and Jeremiah for all of their talents and efforts tonight. And I want to thank the CYA Live platform for providing us this amazing way to communicate with our donors and friends. And in closing, we at Madison, we wish you all safety, health, goodness. Uh, we as a group all strive for peace and continue please to help those in need whenever you are able to. Good night to you all. God bless you all. And thank you very, very much for doing this work. Good night.